Can I successfully make a sports bra that is both supportive, wicks away moisture and hopefully looks good as well? Well, that's what I'm about to find out as I'm embarking on a pretty ambitious sports bra project and I would love to take you along. And the pattern I'm making is this. It's based on a German pattern company called Kibadu but I've done lots of different tweaks to make sure that the bra is really, really supportive. And to be honest, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed right now, but let's take a look at what's going on. In order to make this work, I actually need to make tons of changes to the pattern. So here are all the pattern pieces that I've done so far, and you can see there are lots of different pattern pieces. And the reason for that is that the spores bra usually have up to three different layers. One outer layer, one layer that provides the stability, and the third layer is the linings. And for the support layer, I decided that I want to try create a cup, and I simply did that by drawing a curve on one of the pattern pieces to create a round shape. So here are some of the fabrics and nets I'm currently using. And to the left here I have something that is called Duoplex. It's from Beverly Johnson, but I'm sure you can find similar fabrics. It's a very stable knit and this is used for the cups and those parts of the bra that needs a lot of stability. But as you can see it has very little amount of stretch, so I can't make an entire sports bra using this material because then I will not be able to to get it over my body. And the second fabric I'm using here is a black power net. This is very firm and I'm using this primarily for the razor back because it's so stable that I'm, I'm pretty sure it will give great support and also some ventilation. And the third fabric is a custom print that I made uh, using the, the Spoonflower service. I've designed the print myself. It's a wonderful sports liquor and I really like it. So I had some, I've used it for leggings previously and now I have a little bit of scrap left that I use for the bra. This will be for the outer shell. And then I have a grey power net. And why I'm using both grey and black is because this power net, which I had in my stash, is actually has more stretch. So, so I will use this piece where it's needed to have more um, stretch and less stability. So I'm actually using two different power nets in this. Fifth fabric here is a black suplex. Suplex is always a very soft which is a lining and it has not much stability. Now I'm going to show you my favorite way of creating a flat seam on knits because obviously you don't want a bulky seam when you're doing the seam that goes over the nipple on a bra. So what I do instead is that I first attach the pieces using a narrow six stack stitch. So narrow six stack stitch makes the fabric to have a tiny amount of stretch but it also creates a seam that is almost like a straight seam. Then I press the seam allowance apart and top stitch over the seam. I'm using a narrow cover stitch seam here, but obviously if you don't have a cover stitch machine, you can also use a zigzag stitch or a twin needle stitch on your regular sewing machine. So there's lots of different ways of doing that, but I really recommend using the kind of flat seaming because you don't really always have to use a super stretchy overlock seam whenever you're sewing this. It all depends on the materials, but as you can see here, I'm using a very stretchy material and it still works really nice to just attach the pieces using a narrow zigzag stitch. Now I am basically just experimenting. I don't have any idea what I'm doing here, but the theory is that I could uh, create a sort of a mimic of a proper underwire bra by just using a band to create that round shape of the cup. And I first tried using just a regular bra casing, but I felt it was a bit too stiff. I didn't really like it. Then I found some uh, soft plush bra strap elastic that I had left from a previous bra making project. And I'm instead attaching that, just sewing along the line to create that underwire. Okay, this is how the experiment turned out. I think it's quite nice. Uh, there are basically a lot of different things going on here. On the side, there is the grey power net that uh, has a little bit less stability. The black piece for the cup is a duoplex, so that is the firm knit which has very little stretch, so I figure that would be good for the cup. And then the large piece is the firmer black power net. And I initially thought to actually use the um, duoplex for uh, the large piece as well, but then I realized it has doesn't have any stretch and since I'm, I'm actually doing a bra that needs to be pulled over my body with no closure, I need to have a lot of stretch even in the mid layer pieces. 
several different ways to close the edges of our sports bra. I would say in simple terms three different ways. One is to, to cover all the layers using either fold over elastic or binding. And the third option which I'm opting to do right now is just to attach all the layers in one single seam. This makes it obviously way more simple for me to just be able to stitch all the three layers in one go and just flip it over and then the bra is basically done. Now I'm going to show you probably the, the most simple way of attaching the back straps to the front piece of a bra or a sports top or whatever you like. And the trick is basically that you pull in the back piece inside the tunnel of the front straps. Uh, so in this case my back piece is just power net covered with fold over elastic so it doesn't is, isn't actually like a, a several different layered piece but it does work for that as well but it's especially useful if you're doing sort of spaghetti straps or any type of single layer. So you pull the back piece all the way through so it comes up in the opening of the front straps and then you just close it. And to be sure that this will actually work out, I like to machine base or hand base it first and, and pull it out to see if it looks okay. And a super important thing to know when you're doing this technique is that you really make, need to make sure that the front piece width is the same as the back piece. Okay, I changed my mind about the cups because initially I didn't, hadn't actually planned to use foam cups, but then I tried the bra and felt that perhaps Probably due to the fact that I'm using such a compressive mid layer that I do feel that they tend to squeeze, the bra tends to squeeze my boobs a bit too much. So I've actually decided now to add foam cups and I have some foam cups that I bought earlier for this particular sports bra project and I'm going to insert these but the problem with the ones I'm having is they're quite large, they're done for swim cups. So I am going to actually use a pair of uh, removable ready to wear cups that I have for another sports bra as a guide to just remove the excess foam. I have never ever done something like this and I have no idea if it works. If this is how you do it, I have no idea. Please tell me in the comment section because I would love to know if you can actually do this. But I am just cutting away now the excess of the cups and what I realized is that it does turn to puff up a little bit, the foam sort of expands, so I'm going to solve this by top stitching the edges, uh, so hopefully that will keep the foam in place. Again, is that how you do it? I would love to know, I have no idea what I'm doing here, but at least I managed to make the cups more similar to the ones that I already have, and I think they look okay. Obviously they're not visible, so it doesn't really matter if the edges aren't that neat. And if I had thought about this from the beginning, I would have actually done like a lot of ready to wear sports bra where they have a little bit opening in the sides for removable cups so you can put them out and put them in. But now because the lining is already constructed and attached, I don't have that option. So what I'm going to do now is to just pull the cups inside between the lining and the mid layer. And then I just figured I could do some loose like bot tacking hand stitching to just keep them in place and I, I'm just going to do that at the three edges the opposite triangle so I figure if I do at, at the, all the points of the triangles that will hopefully make the cups stay put because if if they can be stay put on a red to wear bra that has removable cups with no type of attached attach function I should definitely be able to keep the cups in place it should be good enough hopefully again I have no idea what I'm doing with the cups this is totally unshot territory for me, so who knows it will work, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed for this. I can't believe that I'm almost done now. It's only one thing that remains, and that is creating the casing for the bra. And obviously, when you're making casing, you need to secure the elastic to the fabric before you close the casing, because otherwise your elastic will start to rotate around when you're wearing it. And you don't want to do that. You don't want twisted elastic inside the casing. That's all, oh, you know, super annoying to, to fix. So what I'm doing here is that uh, after I cut the rectangle for the casing, I am attaching the elastic to the casing using a three thread overlock here, but obviously you can do six zigzag stitches or whatever stretchy stitch that you have. It's important now to stretch out the elastic because the, um, the casing is a little bit wider, the, the fabric is a little bit wider and I want my bra strap to sit quite tight. I think you're supposed to just being able to 
put like two fingers between the rib cage and the bra band because that's a good fit which which means that it's supposed to sit quite tight and the lower edge of the bra is a little bit uh, wider than that so that's what I'm doing and a next step after that I attach the other side of the casing to the bra so now I have an open piece and for this step I use the full thread overlock because I really want something that's very stable the last step is basically to just fold it over and then top stitch it in place. I use my cover stitch machine here but a regular zigzag stitch, a three step zigzag stitch or a twin needle will work just as well. It doesn't really matter I think. ta -da! The bra is done. Yes, I have actually managed to create this sports bra. It actually took me I think about two days. <laughs> I thought I would do it in an evening. Very naive of me. But as you can see this is turned out pretty close to what I had envisioned and I'm super thrilled. Now obviously I am one of those people who are prone to point out the flaws in my own make so I would just talk about them and get them over with. Uh, first I got some drag lines on the casing. I think that's because uh, the I didn't probably feed the up, upper layer so it sort of got some little drag lines. You can see a little bit on the side here I think. It's a little bit annoying, but whatever. And the second part, uh, the mesh panel here, it got a little bit uh, wobbly, I think. I don't know why. I probably has something with my bust shape. It doesn't really fill up here because my, my bosom is quite a wide set apart. So there is actually not much to fill it up here and give it shape because if my boobs had been a little bit bigger, I think it would have not been an issue. But you live and you learn, whatever. Anyways, I'm super happy. Uh, shall we look, take a look at the back now? I really like the, the racer back. I'm super happy that I used the power net. And it's definitely really stable. Let's take a look. Whoops. <laughs> Hopefully you could tell, I had no idea. Uh, as you can see, the, the cups that I had are very subtle. and. If you feel here, you can actually sense the casing that I created using the plush elastic, but I don't think it's too visible on the outside. And it definitely helps shaping my bosom because they, they don't have much natural shape. So it's always nice to, to get a little bit of uh, a piece. You can see it, it get, I think I really like how, how it turned out actually. Uh, it was way harder than I anticipated and I was making up so many things along the way that I sometimes felt I had no idea what I was doing. Now granted, I'm a small chest person, but there are also some sewing patterns that are designed for fuller bust that has a big size range. And in the description section, I will link to a resource about lots of different sports bra patterns. So you can find someone that will fit your body type as well and your preference. So there are actually quite a few out there. But as I said, if you want to do one of those more simple patterns that I've used here, you definitely need to do some extra work with the inner layer in order to achieve that supportive fit that you obviously want if you want to have a supportive sports bra. 